you are welcome to join at the stage if you want to chat with three muse. We will make a little space so you also can be uh, in cover for the rain. But Jasmine, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm really pleased. Uh, first of all, I'm Esmina Lazovic. I work as a um, coordinator of the research team at the Free News International Organization, which uh, defends artistic freedoms. Uh, so basically our work is focused on uh, expression and right to access to cultural rights. Um, we are here today to discuss uh, basically freedom of expression uh, on LGBTI grounds from the different perspectives. And we have a different uh, guest here who I would like to invite um, to introduce themselves. So our first guest comes from Poland. Bart, would you uh, tell us a few words about yourself and what do you do in, uh, in regard of uh, LGBTI expressions? Thank you. Thank you so much for, for making this opportunity to be here, speak here, uh, especially to Free Muse and uh, Kaja Ciosek, which is over there. Uh, it, was, it is great. But what I'm doing in Poland is actually fighting right-wing government on a, by different methods, especially creative one. Uh, in 2016, I made a documentary movie, which is my main uh, thing which I'm doing on a daily basis. I'm a videographer. 2016, it was a documentary, Article 18, about the LGBT rights in Poland. And so since 2016, when law and justice came into power, so currently ruling government, lots of things happen. And we as activists have quite a big struggle. Uh, myself, I created a campaign. Uh, campaign, photographic project, uh, it has different names, uh, about the LGBT reasons with the yellow sign I created for this purpose, uh, moving around to the places which introduce, uh, introduce homophobic bills around Poland and to make it visible for people what it means to make a zones of exclusion, zones where the LGBT people cannot feel safe, zones where they are fighting so-called uh, LGBT ideology. So, uh, and since then, lots of things happened to me because I has got a lot of lawsuits for it from the government, um, from the local government, uh, uh, encouraged by the law and justice politicians. So, and it was also the part of the biggest strategies to threaten the activists. And this is for what I'm right now going. So apart from being here in Denmark, I am usually on a courtroom. Thank you. Um, Jacob, would you like to introduce yourself? You're basically our host here from uh, Denmark and you deal with the freedom of expression. Yes, uh, thank you very much for, for inviting me to, to Free News. Um, um, yeah, so I am the executive director of uh, a think tank called Justitia, which focuses on uh, rule of law, fundamental rights issues, but also um, directing our project on the future of free speech, where we, we focus on global issues related to free speech. And uh, I think one of the, um, the burning issues in Europe at the moment is uh, the LGBTI issue, where we see a number of countries increasingly trying to crack down on so-called LGBTI propaganda or ideology, um, uh, typically strategically trying to say, you know, we're going to shield minors, uh, but something that has ramifications for free speech more broadly, both in terms of uh, it could be artistic speech, it could be uh, it could be it could be protests, it could be symbolic uh, speech, and something which is quite clearly, in my view, aimed at demonizing a uh, a minority and to cater to specific constituencies of these uh, of governments in in these countries, and I think. Uh, the template was probably made uh, in, in Russia in, uh, in, in, in 2013, and it has then been, been taken up uh, by, by Hungary. Turkey uh, is, is also uh, gone, gone a long way, uh, and it seems that, 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 um, that Poland is also uh, dabbling its feet uh, in, 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 uh, in these waters. Um, so this is something that I think is um, it's very important to uh, to counter <laughs> in democratic Europe. Um, at the same time, I also very much view free speech uh, from a very principled side. So we also try to argue that in order to counter um, homophobia, limiting free speech is the wrong approach. 
So in, in our view, um, minorities, whether it's racial, uh, religious, uh, sexual minorities, have always depended on the practice and the principle of free speech and censorship and oppression have always have always been instrumental.
course of two and a half weeks, documented 100 feet per day. It doesn't, I would say that's a significant number, but we need to put it in certain context to, to, to understand what actually, why this number could be really terrifying. Uh, almost half of these violations that we documented uh, occurred in countries which don't have any um, uh, restrictions on freedom of uh, expression related to LGBTI issues. So it is those countries where homosexuality is um, uh, decriminalized and have no legal restrictions on artistic form expression related to LGBTI issues. So those are the countries where she do not necessarily expect that violations occur, but they still occur. And uh, for example, one of uh, one of good examples of the country is Brazil. Brazil is a country that doesn't have a single law which uh, discriminates against uh, LGBTI uh, expressions, but we we see the role of uh, religious community, the role of uh, Populist, I will put in that words, I don't know how the best to, uh, how best to describe the, the regime in, in uh, Brazil, but that the populist government is really using uh, LGBTI uh, community as a common target in order to uh, achieve its um, uh, right to lead political laws. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the, another part of violations that we documented occurred in those countries which either criminalize homosexuality and, um, uh, or such countries as Russia that have laws which uh, uh, restrict affirmative depiction of, LG, of homosexuality in public space. Um, this number is again is huge, uh, but it tells us that it doesn't matter how regressing what society could be, how restrictive it could be about uh, LGBTI rights, uh, or to replace, I would say that there is no law, no government, no convention, convention which can prevent people from expressing themselves on LGBTI issues. Regardless of how uh, conservative some societies are, we still have artists who are really brave and uh, try to kind of express themselves regardless of uh, all the boundaries that they um, um, face. Uh, what we also found out um, is really that one issue is like if artists have right to express, if they can actually enjoy their right to express themselves and talk about LGBTI issues in public space. One issue, but the other issue is also uh, what access general public, including the work of common people, have to LGBTI topics public space and if there is a space in cultural institutions in artistic spaces for, for these issues. So we really saw that there are like um, serious restric restrictions uh, in uh, either context and that uh, freedom of artistic expression all, although it does exist in all the countries and uh, um, all the contexts it is under under some kind of pressure and restrictions, uh, and you see in the cases of, of censorship and in some cases also legal persecution, physical attacks, um, uh, digital harassment against uh, LGBTI artists. So, uh, kind of to conclude in this part, what uh, our main um, finding is actually, and again, what I said, I want to give a context to this debate, that the freedom of artistic expression is nothing more, uh, freedom of artistic expression for LGBTI artists is nothing more than just a mirror of what is happening to LGBTI uh, community in, uh, in one country. So LGBTI artists face, face the same problems as um, other uh, LGBTI representatives in uh, one community. So I'll start here about Phoenix uh, uh, report and if you have some questions about it, I, I would be happy to provide some uh, further uh, insight. But uh, Mark, as you are one of those um, uh, persons who express yourself um, both artistically and uh, as an activist, uh, you mentioned that you be like traveling around Europe and advocating for LGBTI rights or you are in the courtroom, so um, maybe because we were a bit distracted at the beginning of this event because of break, if you can tell us um, about your project and what you wanted to 
to achieve and the project we have to in, uh, in trouble with the Polish authorities. And if, as an activist, it works in, in Europe, uh, like the channels around Europe, and we to try to help others, uh, maybe you can tell us something about your research and your activism in uh, that sense. So. Um, I want to give some context to what I have done, to what has uh, happened in what happened in Poland in 2019. It was the LGBT prisons. I made the statements against LGBT ideology, which was created by the right wing politicians uh, on the local level, where they voted for it. And they created the statements um, in about 40 months of politics. It was the simple states, one pagers, where they were telling that they would fight for the traditional family values, they will fight with the propaganda and with the soldiers to call political correctness, the same the traditional Christianity in those places. And so they asked the mayor to do whatever is in his power to, to, to make those things happen. Um, and for us it was very obvious that they are discriminating those people, but for media and for people it wasn't. So uh, me as being an activist, I was wondering how can they give some life on this thing and how can I use some creative way to make it more visible to people that this is something very horrible that they are excluding some part of local communities from 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 society. And I need the yellow sign because an outcome of the Sobokov prejudice in the mirror which I wanted to, to, to show to these places. Um, I created it and I noticed it under the names of those places which they clearly do that. So, so we were around 40 photos I made so far, uh, to the 45 places uh, around the Poland, so in a very like departure places. Um, and it ended like I posted on the, the first photo on 2020 in January on the thing, we can so it on Twilight. Uh, it tries a very big discussion about the things happening in Poland. And of course, uh, no uh, authoritarian government like to make an excuse for what they made uh, or apologize, so they wanted to make a scapegoat from us as activists or blame us for what is happening. So when the European Union and other uh, Norway comes with the, the funds for Poland uh, and also the Little Freedoms, they were trying to put the that the, 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 the zones were never existing and they are just an uh, expression of, uh, of my project. So, uh, and then we needed to defend ourselves. Me, I mean, me, another activist, tell you that the LGBT freedoms uh, is just a common name for those resolutions, which is very obvious. And all of these European institutions have to deal with their uh, decision on the matter of the resolution, not the photographic project. Of course, their propaganda was to charge us, was to blame us, uh, no matter the, the facts which are behind, because the, the, the one who are the loudest and empowered, the one is uh, the hearing. Um, and of course, the losses I got from the council policy, which was encouraged by the politicians to public TV, which is in you know, the rich in hand of the Polish government, uh, the, the law and justice uh, politicians was repeating themselves all of the time, telling that the mass of politics should, should lose it, and the other activists was creating an attention to those uh, resolutions. So, it happened to be that I got four lawsuits, my friends got by seven, uh, who was creating so called Atlas of Faith, with the beautiful map of Poland where the old uh, municipalities who declare themselves anti LGBT had been to us in the year So, uh, and it's horrible because most of the time we are standing on the court uh, rooms, defending ourselves, the, the, the legal costs are also, also quite big, and it's quite not new strategy because we observe it around Europe or slap, so certainly crosses against the public participation. They want to intimidate us, they want to make others uh, to see that what will happen to you if you follow my steps and others. And of course, uh, to take all of the pressure time from us because we will not be active, full time active, because we will spend our time in the courtroom. So myself, I of course, I think with the system, I, I dedicated myself to this, to this fight. On the other hand, I was in the library last time when they introduced this horrible law uh, which banned uh, the visibility of the LGBT people uh, around the country. And uh, my idea was to do the same sign I was using in Poland to, to, to sign polls as uh, mass policies, to put it on the door of the parliament. And of course, I used my privilege, uh, being known, 
Uh, and so I avoided the final kind of penalty because when police came, because they couldn't the sign uh, in Hungary on the, on the door of the parliament, they were very surprised at what happened. And they didn't even find me because they were still afraid of me that it is something political. They were calling everyone, uh, making photos of me, scrolling on the page of who and I, asking me uh, what I, why I'm doing this, uh, and smiling. So, yes, I think that we sometimes can use our privilege for, for a good cause. And, that's just what I'm doing. Uh, but we are also paying price for it. Thank you, um, Jane. Maybe uh, I would like to ask you um, two questions. Like what um, Mark has just explained to us and the problems he has uh, with uh, the coming from the governmental level. One of the three new findings related to um, violations of uh, uh, freedom of participation on LGBTI grounds is that 53 uh, percent of all, all violations documented actually were committed by governments and different different state funded bodies. Um, so my question for you would be like uh, aside from uh, these laws that governments impose, what are what are the other groups or other potential uh, challenges um, uh, where the threat comes from when it comes to LGBTI community. So one side would be where does threat come from and the other would be uh, what are the, the solutions uh, as uh, Denmark uh, has been a member of the EU, European Union, do you think that uh, the fight for improvement at this level should come from these international organizations? From the national government working with them, or it should come grassroots from, from the activist um, uh, bottom up? Yeah, that's another great question. Um, obviously, you know, depending in, in which countries you are, there can also be a, um, a threat from, from extremists um, who, might, uh, who might attack LGBTI persons. So that's obviously, you know, if you're afraid for your physical security, that not only beats your, your dignity to you as an individual, but it would also uh, impede your ability to, to, to do activism, to, to use symbolic expression uh, where a, um, show it, uh, a product, if, if you fear that thugs will, will, uh, will Violence. So, so that's that's obviously uh, another great uh, series. That, um, in terms of what to do about it, um, uh, I, I definitely think that the EU has has been too soft uh, on, on Hungary and Poland on, on, on these uh, issues. Uh, I think you know it should be a clear choice that to say, okay, if you. Uh, if you want to continue to enjoy the benefits of the EU membership, not least uh, the money <laughs> that you get, then uh, you know you have to put them up to, to these basic principles. So you can't have it, you can't have it both ways. Um, uh, but obviously, activism uh, is, is also uh, a, a, a huge part of it. So I don't think those are mutually exclusive uh, things. I think you need to have uh, a broad spectrum. Uh,
that there's no simple solution and that's the, the sad part, but I am sort of quietly optimistic in the long run. I fully agree with you too. Uh, and I think it's very simple that we all need to have uh, more Let's say, like on the paper, it looks really ideal. We have no 
Islamic law. Uh, there is some kind of uh, harmonization of different laws with, uh, um, in order to, to make uh, um, uh, anti-discrimination laws uh, on, uh, on the basis of sexual orientation, gender identity, expression, in all of the different laws. So, so it's not only that we have anti-discrimination law, we want to harmonize all other laws to be uh, anti-discriminatory when it comes to um, um, uh, social security and, and things like that. But of course, uh, at, this, at this very moment, uh, I am a minority. Prime Minister of Serbia is openly uh, lesbian, uh, but um, even though she has been uh, openly lesbian, she was brought to the government uh, to help with the economical development, and uh, the activists of Serbia really started to see any of her uh, contribution to the improvement of uh, LGBTQ rights. Uh, especially when it comes to recognized partnerships, uh, the point of the issue that has been in the parliament uh, at this very moment, and there is really huge resistance right, by different um, religious groups, um, and particularly by right uh, uh, groups and, polit and politicians. Um, so I will also add that uh, Serbia, in the first census, successful Pride Parade was organized in Serbia. In 2010. There was one attempt in 2001 which ended up in really um, in, in the blood in the streets and uh, also that kind of uh, really uh, not only scared uh, the potential organizers and uh, local LGBT community from organizing the um, uh, Pride Parade in the future, but also having made this space so small and almost impossible.
food groups and uh, even artistic community itself uses to, to suppress uh, freedom of expression on LGBTI issues. Uh, it could be mostly related to, to religion, say that it's against dominant religious views in the society. It could be about moral norms, saying that uh, it's uh, and it, that uh, expressing LGBTI issues in public space is against uh, uh, public morality, or it could be um, on the grounds that majority of the society doesn't accept something like that, uh, or um, as we mentioned a couple of times, I would like to really now to, to focus on, on the issue of. Um, um, so-called harmful effect which exposure to homosexuality can have on, on minors, which is uh, which we see on, not only in Russia, as the country which was the first one to uh, in Europe to uh, adopt such a law, but also now we, we see that um, there is um, the same trend in Hungary. So Jacob, would you a little bit reflect on it, what, how wrong it is to um, deprive minors from access to LGBTI content, artistic or otherwise, especially for educational purposes. Yeah, I think the, the toxic premise of it is that if, if minors, uh, if children, uh, and, you know, we're not talking about, you know, porn here, it's not, it's not that it's a sexually graphic images, it's just, it could be, uh, it could be, you know, a, it could be a book uh, where you have a same-sex relationship, for instance. So the basic construct, if, 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 if governments say this, um, you know, is harmful for children, then the underlying premise, not the subtle uh, premise, is that uh, LGBTI uh, relationships in themselves are harmful, and that is something uh, that should be, uh, you know, that should not be the norm for children. So those who are uh, LGBTI persons are so uh, and we want to shield our children from that because they might become, you know, uh, infected with, uh, with, with, with this uh, ideology or these ideas that are deviated from, from, from the other norm. So, but at the same time, it's, you know, it's a clever way to do it in the sense that we all, all societies, you know, liberal democratic societies accept that there are, there are different, um, you know, that there are different restrictions of what you can subject children to. So all of us agree, uh, at least most of us agree, that, you know, when children are watching TV, you don't show a uh, hardcore porn, whether it's uh, with, a, with a, of whichever uh, persuasion. Uh, and, and, you know, you don't have graphic violence and so on. And so they use that uh, to, to, to sort of say, well, LGBTI um, content is also uh, um, So they use sort of a, a restriction that is commonly accepted and then push their uh, sort of anti-LGBTI um, agenda into that, uh, which makes it, on the face of it, less directly um, about restricting free speech, there's a, an out and out law that says, you know, you can't, you can't have a, um, you can't show LGBTI symbols um, uh, generally. But of course, you know, if, if, if the event is, is interpreted in such a way, you know, children, minors walk around in the public space. So if you interpret it in such a way that a flag like that constitutes you know, LGBTI uh, propaganda ideology, and children are walking around the square, and therefore you can't show it. That means that it's a restriction that is not only aimed at children, it's, it's a general restriction, the fact to aim at the public sphere and limiting the disability of LGBTI persons uh, and, and uh, expressions. Uh, and that's, uh, so I think that's really the, um, the, the strategy. And maybe because I, I see that we are running out of uh, time, uh, I would like maybe just for us to go with the final uh, round. We actually have a question here. Tessie, you want to
actually this is just space for YouTube removing some of LGBTI content from uh, uh, their platforms, which gives us uh, kind of brings us to conclusion that on the top of being discriminated, um, the guy from uh, regular jobs, the guy from the opportunity to perform and earn some uh, money for money, some LGBTI artists also had an issue that um, their uh, work was, uh, they were not able to share their work uh, online. And I also recall one uh, actually interesting example of uh, lesbian couple musicians from, who were based in uh, Los Angeles uh, who um, promoted, who put on a Facebook um, post in order to invite people to donate for their artistic project, and that post was banned. Even additionally, the crime, the artists on the opportunity to reach their uh, community and uh, earn some income uh, from that. So, uh, maybe uh, in order to, to conclude this um, discussion that, that uh, we've seen, uh, we've uh, had now under this uh, interesting uh, weather uh, circumstances, I'll uh, just say as a free news uh, organization that deals with freedom of expression, uh, it is really helpful that we have uh, two thirds of the world, uh, two thirds of the world governments uh, which decriminalize homosexuality. Uh, still, a long way to go until uh, this uh, world is uh, at least the legislation level. Of And on legislation, the level we don't uh, see homophobic laws uh, anymore. But on the other hand, um, uh, as um, we've seen uh, these examples of censorship, such as this one, last one, which I mentioned, with the uh, from the social media uh, platforms, such as Facebook, but also I would like us, because here today in Copenhagen, uh, World Pride. Celebration of LGBTI love, and also, but I will also kind of like to remind us that there are still people in uh, different countries who severely struggle because uh, they are LGBTI who cannot, not only do they cannot uh, publish their work when it comes to LGBTI uh, content, uh, they cannot find people who um, uh, dare to cooperate uh, with that because of their. Whose lives are really seriously endangered, and um, I would like to remind the example of Sarah Casey from um, Egypt, who um, committed suicide last year, following a few years of um, um, trauma that she has because she was present in a concert in 2017 in Egypt. The concert was uh, Lebanese indie rock band uh, with the open gay content. And at that very concert, she, during the concert, made um, a rainbow flag. She was spotted by the authorities who, of course, used the uh, different uh, social media platforms to track people who were present in the concert. She was uh, detected as one of the gay flag um, in prison, kept uh, in solitary confinement. To torture and um, live in the street while she was in prison, and once when she was released, uh, uh, um, uh, waiting for a trial, trial, she managed to escape to, to Canada. But now she was in Canada, she was actually really haunted by what she has been through, and um, unfortunately, she um, um, committed suicide. So, even though I, I gave this example of just for us as a reminder for, for us, even though that we are here today uh, in this wonderful city, which is we, we see on every single corner how different institutions here uh, support uh, LGBT.